Hello everyone and welcome to the eWeek news break for the week of May 26, 2008. I'm Asha Daly. Last month, LendingTree was the latest U.S. enterprise to fall victim to a major data breach. What's more important in this story, though, is that it did not involve any malware, cloaking software, or even a slip of the firewall. Instead, several former employees simply handed over their old logins and passwords to the culprits. And the story is likely to be repeated at another business. eMedia USA surveyed 850 security, IT, HR, and C-level executives, and what they found is startling. 27% said they have multiple orphaned accounts to contend with. 12% said that it takes more than 30 days to terminate an account when an employee or contractor leaves their organization. Security officials also say that it's not unusual to find as many as 70 orphaned accounts, many still with activity at a mid-sized organization. Security pros say there are ways to help prevent your passwords from walking out the door. First and foremost, have a good security policy that stipulates how these accounts should be handled. Then define and implement security controls to make it happen. Google Health opened to the public last week, but not everyone is cheering. Many skeptics have raised concerns about privacy. Google Health combines the web company's classic search services with the user's personal health records online, making it available to pharmacies, doctors, and hospitals anywhere. One feature includes a link to help users find doctors by location or specialization. There's even a virtual pillbox that notifies patients when they need to take medication, and it warns them of potential drug interactions. The site would be password protected, but the mere collection of such personal data has privacy advocates scolding the idea. This week, Eric Lundquist reveals how recent blockbusters could give insight into the IT arena. Eric? Thanks, Ashley. Well, Indiana Jones is back with the last and final remake of a series that started about 10 years ago. It made me think that there's probably three remakes that we should do for the high-tech industry. A one, that would be the long goodbye. And this is Microsoft and Yahoo unable to get together but uh, just uh, can't live apart from each other. It looks like Microsoft is trying to get Yahoo once again into their sphere. Uh, the second one would be, that would be a fistful of dollars. So well, that's an old Clint Eastwood movie, but this one would be, again, Microsoft plays a role. Uh, one laptop per child seems to be ready to do some business with Microsoft, this time taking in a, a sort of a low-cost operating system from Microsoft to run on the one laptop per child computer. And the third one, Ashley, uh, that would be the day the earth stood still. And that's a little bit of a warning that in this era of sort of green thinking and uh, less oil and more expensive gas that we probably better really be concerned about the amount of electricity we're using and use it wisely. Back to you, Ashley. Many companies have turned to virtualization to save power and space, but as they've learned, what they're getting is much, much more. For some, virtualization has turned into a huge asset. Last week, eWeek reporters sat down with VMware CTO Steve Herod. Herod believes that after a user consolidates servers and aggregates resources, the machines become more than just the sum of their parts. He's found that users can then use the machine as a cluster of resources to set up backups, failover, and load balancing during the course of the day as the workload changes. A well-tuned hypervisor will even coordinate the parallel processing of multi-core chips and schedule virtual machines to simultaneously use all the resources of the machine. If you're looking for a job, you'll definitely want to listen to this. IT staffing firm Sapphire Technologies just released a new study that indicates that it actually still matters where someone lives when he or she is looking for a job. Depending on the IT job you are pursuing, they found you're likely to find the odds better or worse depending on where you're looking. Software development rules the day in Austin, Texas as 59% of openings in the city fall into the category. In San Francisco, software development accounts for a mere 19% of openings, the same as project managers. In Los Angeles, 33% of the openings are for desktop support positions. So you may want to decide if you want a new job or a new home. And that's it for this week's eWeek News Break. I'm Asha Daly. Thanks for watching.